Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic spring day. I was just uh, taping in, actually, some loose watercolors that we did um, earlier in the season. And this is just uh, invisible tape. So, uh... I've done a few on my own, like these were done on my own. I was into the spring. I can't wait. It's actually out in the garden today for a little bit. Just cutting some stuff down. Felt so good. So I thought we have daffodils. Um, that's a crocus. That's a tulip. That's a hyacinth. Um, I just thought we could do a few very simple and I'm not I'm not even going to get a reference. I just want to wing it. And that's when I like to experiment or practice different ways of, of painting or drawing or sketching that type of thing. And it's very um, stressful, stressless in the way that I'm going to do it because it's just in my sketchbook where I learn. So if you have a sketchbook, get it out. Or um, even try uh, even just uh, ordinary paper, whatever. And we'll do a few little uh, wet into wet type of uh, paintings here. Just, just playing, really. Um, so I, for me, the thing that comes up are irises and muscari. Uh, what else is up right now? Tulips are just starting to show. And... A little bit of, uh, just trying to find my other brush. There it is. Some of the uh, magnolias will be starting soon, like the very um, star magnolias, that type of thing. Uh, what's that one called? Stelladora, I think they call it. The white one very pretty. I have one in my backyard. But I want it to be loose. So I'm going to start off with some muscari. Now muscari is like a grape hyacinth. That's the common name. And you usually see it in different shades of blue. But it's a sometimes they go into a purple. I think you can get white ones now. Um, let's just turn this around. But I thought we could experiment in how to do them. Now, they usually start opening from the base up. So let's just play a little bit. And they have kind of grass-like foliage in some of them. Some of them have a wider leaf. There, there's quite a few different forms. But they are um, uh, basically just little balls they look like on a stem. They get uh, kind of like a tree but not real wide. They're fairly thick as, as they go up um, as far as their form. And then maybe a little, a few more uh, spaced in the bottom part because they'll be opening up. So you can just take a little bit of paper towel or Kleenex, whatever, and a little bit of water on your, and then uh, just touch into that. And I want more uh, water than 
color because they kind of uh, lighten as they uh, bloom. So they're a little bit paler. We'll just put a few lighter areas in here, more on the bottom area than anywhere else, because that's where you'll see them. And then they have a fairly bright green stem. So I have some leaf green here. I'm just going to put it right here. And I'm going to add a little bit of azo green just a smidge just to turn it a little bit more uh, not quite as bright but just a little bit on the uh, olivey side or army green i guess you could say and they're fairly uh, darker that green on the top part and then as it goes into the ground it almost goes into a yellow so you can just uh, take a clean brush with some water and just put a little bit of a lighter coat on the bottom now their leaves are more dark green so I'm going to take a permanent sap green here And they are really, really bright, beautiful green. So, and we can just make these ones, uh, the ones I'm used to are kind of grassy looking. And there's usually quite a few in there. And then you have your uh, little nubs <laughs> new ones that are coming up and usually they're fairly tight looking and they're a little bit darker because they're just starting to grow so they're more compact looking so you can get actually a little bit darker blue if you wanted to maybe even a little bit of um uh paints gray just add a little bit of that dark in there like that put in, let's put one right here the little tiny one just starting to come up they are dark like that And then, um, of course, we always have daffodils. So I'm going to just play with some different yellows here. I love the daffodils that have the more of an orangey center. They're so pretty. So let's do a face on daffodil right here. And I've seen the ones where the outer edge are more orange. Sometimes they're all almost red. There's so many different types. And then we've got some nice bright yellow. This is um, Windsor Newton, Windsor Yellow. And I'm just going to use the heel of my brush and then bring it up there's three that sit on top and then three that sit underneath these petals but they're wide at the bottom and then they kind of come out like that now it's mixing with my orange but i'm okay with that I want these loose. 
And then a little bit of this yellow again. And I'm going to just fill in this area. And it kind of sits behind. Now I'm going to be using probably a little bit of pen work in these. And you can leave some white areas if you want, or you can use uh, colored pencil. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. Just like that. Okay, and then the green, bright green also. They have fairly um, thick stalks. And then a little bit of a thicker leaf, and I'm going to mix a little bit of permanent green with that just to darken some of them up. Hey, Joan, Tori, clock's going forward. Oh, they went, oh, okay, yeah, I forgot you guys were later than us. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while to get used to that, doesn't it? Let's put in maybe a, a little bud of, of uh, And sometimes you see kind of a paper almost, it looks like, on the, just covering that uh, bud up. So you could use a little bit of um, raw sienna or ochre would do. And then the bright, bright part. Sometimes the little base just underneath here is a little bit thicker, like that. Okay, we'll put some more. Just change it up. Just play. All right, and let's try some crocus. So I have. Uh, some Payne's Gray here. And I'm going to put some red in there. Make a nice purple. Dark, dark. And let's do a little bit of wet into wet. So let's put one right here. And then just dab in from the top and let it do its thing. Let it flow down. A lot of times you'll see that they're a little bit uh, darker on the top than the bottom. And you can always uh, wipe up some of that too. So let's Put a few of those in here. I love these. They're probably um, one of my favorite spring flowers because you know how you're craving some kind of color in your garden. <laughs> these are usually the first things you'll see that are snowdrops. Let's put another one right here. I got them going all different directions. That's fine. That one's going to seep into there. That's fine. Add a little bit more color on the top if you want to. Let's take up some of that. That. Okay. 
I like an uneven number, so let's put five in. So maybe one right here, nice tall one. So this is wet into wet that I'm doing. And I'm just letting the paint follow the water that I place down. It. Okay, so we gotta let these dry a little bit before we go back in with a little bit more detail, or you can leave them like this and just use your colored pencils or even um, just ink. Um, let's do, I have some beautiful uh, Dutch iris and they're a beautiful blue, true blue, just love them. Let's wipe this out so you don't mess up that blue. Okay. And they, the bud, you can see almost before the leaves on Dutch on these particular spring Dutch iris. They're so pretty. And there's three um, long petals. that stand right up tall. And then you have these beautiful fall petals. There's, they call them falls. The, and they, uh, they're a little bit wider. I'm doing a, a kind of a side profile of this. Very pretty. Very easy to do. So you guys can do these. I'm just looking at the form of the flower. I'm not looking all the intricate details of it, just the form. And the uh, buds are really pretty too. So they're very, very dark on the top. And then as they go down, they get a little bit lighter and they do have markings on them. Uh, let's see, maybe, oh, let's put another right here. Maybe one just started to bloom. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to leave those for a bit. Now let's dry this with a heat gun just so that I can add a little bit more color. But if I were to add color be at this point when they're just semi-dry, what will happen is I'll get blooms and it'll push that paint away. And I don't want that in these. Dot, good to see you. You must be in, enjoying your beautiful little garden. You guys are so much ahead of us. 
Our stuff is just coming up. Okay, so this mascari here, I'm going to add a little bit more of a more intense blue. So I've got this um, French ultramarine blue. And just at the very top, now I'm going in uh, what they call wet into dry. And I'm just going to dab in some of these areas to be a little bit darker. You want more of the intense dark blue up in the top part here where um, it would be a lot more fuller looking like that. Let's put a little bit in this one too. So just dab, 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 dab. These aren't open at all. They're just the bud. Yes, it is lovely just now, especially with the garden. Okay. Gardener came yesterday and tidied. Oh, that's so nice. When I wish I had a gardener. <laughs> it's just me. I'm the gardener. Oh, my knees are not appreciating it right now. I've got a flare up of arthritis in my knees, and it's hindering my gardening. A little bit of that ochre again in here. Um, hi, Anne. We're just doing very loose uh, spring flowers, just looking at the form of the flower to give the initial um, color to. And then we're going back in right now and adding a little bit of detail on top. These are very free form. It's experimenting and I love doing this. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more yellow in here along this edge here where the trumpet would be. And a real light uh, water on my brush. I'm just going to put a little bit more in there along the edge. Because along the edge, it would be a little darker. A bit more of a brighter just along the top there. And then that bright green in the center here. It's still wet. Just a bit like that. Don't want too much, but just the right amount. Remember this all uh, dries fairly lighter, uh, quite a bit lighter, so Let's do a little bit of that green again. This time I'm going to just put a little bit of a shadow under this. And I'm going to take it down the one side here as a shadow. And just take my wet brush and you can soften that up a little bit if you want. Might be a little bit darker on the bottom here too, where all the shadows would be. Get 
add some permanent green in there too. Just giving it a little bit more interest. that the ones closest to us would be lighter or darker and the ones further away would be lighter okay and let's do a little bit of that green in here you'd see the little bit of uh, of the stem just a little bit though. All right. And then these are our um, budded crocus. So I'm just going to wet the tops and I get that rich purple. Darken that up a little bit. They do have a little bit of striping. You don't see it as much on the... Uh, the newer stuff like the ones that haven't opened yet I could even get a little bit of dioxazine purple here to mix in with that I'm just gonna make it really dark on the top here Just bring it down a little bit on the one side where the shadow might be. That softens some of those edges because they're not totally that abrupt. Okay. And then they have a really cool, um, actually I'm going to use this. This is that new brush that I got, the uh, triangular silver ruby satin. Uh, it has a really nice uh, fine, fine point. And I want a fairly dark green. And they have very fine leaves. You do need a little bit of water on there though. Let's see. And you can go in between and crisscross. Usually quite fine though. Like that. Also scillas and blue oh bluebells. Oh you guys. I love bluebells. We don't we don't see them here. But, um I've been watching um gardening world <laughs> twenty uh eight hours a day almost. Oh and I just love looking at 
those beautiful gardens, the estate gardens. <gasps> oh, man. If I won a bunch of money, I would for sure go to England just to go into the gardens. So I just added a little pale, very pale, a uh, little bit of a, of a stem. Their stems are usually really light colored. Okay, yeah, bright. Now around this here, I'm gonna darken some of that area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, that bright yellow that I used and I'm gonna add a little bit of green to it. Actually, I'm going to use my other brush, my smaller brush. And I'm going to dirty it up with a little bit. Of ochre. So I want it dulled down. And just around where I want the uh, petals to show. So uh, you have to decide which petals you want as the uh, top, top ones and what are the ones that lay over underneath. So this is where mine are going to be. And then I'm just going to dab around the edge of where that uh, trumpet ruffle with, is, because it would be darker. I'm gonna just use this nice color here. Let's see, how did I do that? Top, under, top, like that. And You'll see some little streaks. Also, they are um, kind of got a little bit of, of uh, color to them. And then I'm going to, uh, let's see, a little bit more right in here, right around the center here. Darken it. Now remember, I'm going to do some uh, pen work too. Okay, so these are our Dutch iris. Mine are just coming up. There's usually um, just a few grassy, they kind of got grassy looking foliage. And then they have this uh, kind of a lighter green stem, but it's thicker. Okay, that's going to be a Bud back there. And let's give it some little leaves too. I 
And as the flower fades, the leaf gets taller. It's, it, and they almost look very thick and um, stiff looking. And then mine are a little bit more of a brighter blue. On. That. Just a little bit darker on the bottom. And then there's a little um, darker area on the, just in the center here. Like this. And then they have that bright, bright um, beard. Might have to put that in with uh, gouache. Very pretty. I love blue in a garden. I think it's so pretty. There's not a whole lot of blue flowers, like true blue. That. Just softening that up a little bit so it's not so hard looking all right what should we do next let's get some gouache out I think this is re-wet it Had some already here. We'll add a little bit more yellow to that. Make it brighter. Let's see if we can get just down the center here. There's usually a, they call them a beard. Might have to put a little bit thicker. You can always go back. Like that. If you're enjoying Kathy's, oh, thanks, Tori. All right, maybe a little bit of green under here. Do you have gardens, Tori? My sister's coming up this weekend. <laughs> we'll probably end up gardening because she's in between how houses, homes. She's so craving it. <laughs> I think I might put a little bit of that in here too. 
Why not? Just along, oh, too much water. Just along the edge here. Might be a little bit lighter. Just to lighten those areas up. Not much, but sometimes it helps. You just have to have to experiment, play. See what this is how you learn. It's by playing and experimenting and not worrying about having a piece that's frameable. This is their sketchbook. Let's put a little bit of this in here. Maybe there'd be some lighter areas along there. 